What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Live here on Keystroke Medium. I am Josh Hayes, and if you see me looking back and forth between two cameras, it's because I'm forgetting which one is actually on. I think it's this <laughs> one. It's that one. Yes. Uh, I hate technology, and what's crazy is Scott's not here, and I'm having so many problems by myself. I don't understand. I really don't understand what's happening. We'll just have to mix the two of you. So you, from now on, you're known as Scosh. Yes, I'm Scosh. And he's, and he, and he's Jot. It's like a drink, isn't it, Scosh? <laughs> it is now. One person uh, trapped in two bodies. Yes. Uh, welcome. Uh, today we have Mike Lafferty and our very own Walt Robillard here in the house um, talking about blaster bolts uh, and uh, they, some sh some really cool short fiction uh, that accompanies some tabletop games, and we're going to get into that here in a little while. Uh, let's see. Rick Partlow was the first comment of the chat, and he was actually waiting. See, so before I give Rick his well-deserved golf clap, he sent me a message on Facebook as I'm creating the show poster for the show. Hey, are you guys having a show today? And I'm like, yes, I'm putting the show together right now. So he was like waiting. <laughs> <laughs> so he could get his like in. he was like Pow! as soon as it went live he posted so First post. he gets the golf clap of appreciation thanks rick Corey gillum is second hey kayleen what's up i uh, got some big news involving kayleen and lauren if you guys uh, are just it's just us interested. tell us if you guys are interested <gasps> they're coming back <gasps> really they're coming back writer's with the writer's journey. journey yep 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 love the writer's journey they're, they're, they're such awesome people too so so cool they're uh they're they're changing their uh schedule just a skosh uh but they are coming back uh starting this friday they're coming back with kind of a a, a rebooting episode as it were and then nice. three fridays carry the two uh <laughs> coming uh on 318 march march 18th they'll be coming back with kevin j anderson so he'll be the right. first guest of oh. season seven so they're that's a, that's a good get they're setting the bar really high, actually, for season seven. And uh, so we'll see how well that they can hold that up. Let's see. Who else is in here? Patricia is here. Welcome. Ken is here. Welcome, welcome. Thomas Hoddle is here. Trucker Charlie's in Iowa today. Who else is here? Leo. Leo, is it live? Is, <laughs> is this live? No, Leo, it's not live. You're in another dimension. Uh, let's talk about updates. Uh, Scott and Chuck aren't here, so you guys are going to have to fill in with your updates because I can't be the only one <laughs> updating. Uh, so, Mike, would you like to go first? Or, or actually, Walt, you go first and, and, and show us how it's done, and then, Mike, you can follow up. Uh, yes, there was a thing involving dogs, a penguin in a microwave, and a spilled Indeed. bowl of Cheerios that just went absolutely bam nanas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm not Mike and have to follow that. Uh, no, so a uh, lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of writing uh, this past uh, this past week, and then on Friday uh, for the Galaxy's Edge guys, we launched the uh, Forgotten Ruin role playing game Kickstarter. Uh, so Ooh. that's yeah. That's like uh, <laughs> that's like that's like a part time job in and of itself. Um, we got uh, we got all sorts of craziness going on, especially with uh, the Galaxy's Edge guys doing um, a weekly serial uh, for their insiders. Um, so I have to put that together because uh, they're what they're doing is they're uh, once the serial is written for that week, it goes to editing. They get it back from editing. They do their last looks. Um, and then one of the authors reads it so that those people who are more ear holes than eyeballs, who really like that audio experience, uh, oh. especially for truck drivers, uh, pilots, um, people like me who have uh, a leash in each hand for multiple hours a day, you know, <laughs> um, uh, you know, and, and not just like corgis, uh, you know, I have like flying chainsaws. So to have that, that audio experience the same week that it, uh, uh, that the you know the writing is done, uh, so that the people who love their audiobooks can get it as well. It's it's been really popular and it's really doing a lot for uh, throwing stuff in there. So it's really cool. So yeah, that's been my week. Um, I've slept for an hour uh, in the last three weeks. So uh, at some point, if I fall away from the display, just let it happen. 
Just let okay. it happen. I have a, I actually have a button here that says Walt fell down, and I'm going to push <laughs> that button. Nice. If that happens. I don't know how you do it, Walt. That's a crazy amount of sleep deprivation. Caffeine and hate. All right, do you just Indeed. see through the borders of reality at some point? And you're just like seeing the future and alternate timelines, and because that's, that's it's it's multiple dimensions. And I've been on this podcast four times already. True, <laughs> true. Mike, what about you, man? What have you been up to this week? Um, what have I been up to? So much depressing stuff. I don't want to bring anybody down with. Um, I walk my great Dane a lot. Um, she's 120 pounds. She's a puppy. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I got her and a, her and a corgi, and people see the corgi, they're like, "Oh, that's so cute! Can I talk to you?" I thought, you know, the queen likes these dogs. Then if you're walking the Great Dane, they, holy shit, they cross the street. And, <laughs> <you know. laughs> it's uh, it's funny. Um, other than that, uh, decided to put blaster bolts up to a weekly release. Someone told me, you know, better get them all out at once and try to build some momentum heading into a Kickstarter. So yeah, um, and we'll be talking about that later. But that's uh, kind of what I've been up to for you know here lately. Nothing as exciting as the manic life that Walt leads. I don't think anybody really can claim that. Yeah, Walt's going to write an autobiography one day and just blow us all away, I think. <laughs> yep, the life of a full-contact Scrabble champion. That's uh, that's one of those stories that you read and you're like, there's absolutely no way that this is true. There's like, that this is all made up. No, no one person could experience life in the same way that Walt has. Nobody speaks Tagalog. Come on. <laughs> well, no one who's not Filipino. And then he's going <laughs> to write it in Klingon. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you threaten me with a good time. Carpla. <laughs> uh, let's see. Before I give my update, let me make sure I didn't miss anybody in the chat. Uh, Jay is here. Fridays are fun again, uh, specifically talking about the writer's journey. True. And yes, Leo, we can see your thong. So, uh, you're, you're, that that's you might want to take care of that. Uh, let's see, what have I been up to this week? Are I, there any new dolls? I mean, action figures. Just excuse me, just one second. Uh, so <laughs> there are. Uh, I don't know if there are any more action figures on my wall. I don't know. You know, I just, got my, I just got my kid a uh, Boba Fett plushie for his birthday this weekend. Ah, he turned nice. nine. And y you have to realize that All Star Wars is really a toy, a toy commercial. That is and true. It's, and it's, it's a, you know, it's a plushie like this with a, a fully functional rocket launcher. My, it's it's a little air thing. That, it's not we're not taking out tanks in the streets of Broomfield, Colorado. But um, you have my attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you can hold his hand and you can record any phrase that you want and it'll come back in Boba Fett's voice, which is um, a lot more fun than it should be. Interesting. So I don't think that I have any new collectibles. I have a new book on the shelf, but that's that's about it. Is that the Sierra six one? Yeah. Which is fantastic. I finished. I, I got the uh, hardback, but I listened to it in Audible. I got the, uh, the the signed copy. And it was a fantastic book. Uh, let's see. What have I been up to this week? I uh, finished a short story for... Um, I think the anthology is called Wanted Dead or Alive. It's a bounty hunter anthology from uh, Chris Kennedy Publishing. Jamie Ibsen is putting it together. Um, I finished that story and, and edited it up. Uh, I came just over the word count, uh, uh, which is, you know, my, my trend. Um, that has uh, never happened, especially <laughs> when you have something for 7,000, turn in 10,000. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so I turned in that it was 10,500. So I really, I mean, honestly, I really was it over. I mean, it really. Uh, but I, I, I turned that in. Um, I've been uh, working in uh, Claflin for the last four days. I uh, went up on... Um, did I go up Thursday night? Yeah, I went up Thursday night. So I've been up there for uh, about four days and did a lot of work on uh, my fantasy project, The Aspect War. And uh, did a lot of uh, handwritten notes in uh, my notebook. And I, I probably wrote, I don't know, uh, four or 5,000 words worth of lore and plot information and character building and all that stuff. Uh, just sitting in the patrol truck watching empty roads for 
hours of the time while listening to uh the lord of the Rings soundtrack so do you get more inspiration when you're strapped versus unstrapped no like, no, like, uh, like you're sitting there and you're like oh writer's block and you put your hand on your taser and you're like yeah yes i do i'm like i threaten myself if you don't come up <laughs> with a good plot right now i will tase you <laughs> uh and and so it, honestly it works like i just start start sitting there and i i start writing out a whole bunch of words uh i i've been i've been trying to um work out this uh plot and this lore in my head to make sure the magic system works and and all that stuff and it's, it's changed significantly from my original idea for the story uh for the better um and uh so anyway yeah I'm, I'm working through that and my my original goal at the the beginning of the month was to have the entire outline finished by the end of the month and while it's not finished i'm super close to having it done uh if my calculations are correct right now the book will be sitting at about 120 or 145,000 words that's good um but i have another plot arc to add on so it's probably going to sit like 160 ish 175 give or take yeah, fantasy is usually longer right yeah uh, i was actually aiming for 180 uh and i trimmed a whole bunch of stuff out so i, I think it'll be around 165 probably when it's all said and done well the good thing with fantasy is you can just add in extra random apostrophes to increase the word count <laughs> 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 yes, that is true. And I think I'm going to try to like like every sentence have an apostrophe word. So people are and just like combine like normal words with an apostrophe and see how much it screws with people's heads. That that is quality fantasy world building right there. Yeah. You got you'll have you a production know. deal with Amazon in no time. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, if you really want help with a magic system, find one of those, well, actually, like D&D players. Yes. Right? They're and like pushing like, their glasses. Look at this. Right. Within yeah. 20 minutes, you will get a phone call. Like, I was just perusing. You know, now, meanwhile, <laughs> he's got like one of those like, like whiteboards, like you see in the police department with like strings going. Yes. Up. I was just perusing your uh, magic system and I might have some suggestions. So yeah, yeah, you team up with like a pro D and D dude. They will they will let you know if that stuff works or not. He's like that that meme that's uh it's got the the guy like like this and he's from in front in a wall with a whole bunch of post it notes and eight hundred different strings. Yeah, that's me. Ken says I pad my fantasy novels starting in book two. That's true. That's true. Um, actually, it's uh it's pretty tight. Uh, the, the story is going to uh, hold up pretty tightly and, and most of the lore and world building I did isn't going to appear in the books. I just have to have it like here. So I understand everything going on. And, uh, it's like, what I can't remember who it was. I think it was, um, I think it was Patrick Rothfuss. Uh, I could be wrong. Anyway, he, he, whoever it was came up with like an elaborate financial system and like, money and coins and all this stuff and he like had denominations and he wrote i don't know was ten thousand words on a financial system just so he understood how it worked so he could have people pay for shit like <laughs> i'm not i'm not going that far um but uh it i i need to know the the lore of why the world is what why it is right now so i can write it out um and let's see. And then I, I've done some work on Tranquility. I think I just finished. Um, I don't know how many chapters it is for me, but it's chapter 22. And I'm moving on uh, to 24, I think is next to the list. Uh, hopefully we'll have that done this in March, not this month, but next month. We'll have the whole thing done. And then it's on to weaponized, which I'm really having fun with. So. Uh, anyway, man, I could really ramble, can't I? Can't and I? It's like I have an like a podcast or something, <laughs> and I and Isn't I that, just talk to hear myself talk. Isn't that the point? Host. Uh oh, and and uh, I read, I got an early version of Against All Odds, which is Jeffrey Haskell's new Mill sci-fi book. So a whole bunch of people reading the early version. I was able to get it in PDF so I could listen to it. 
And uh, yeah, Tom says rambling of valor. Yes, this is going to be a new segment on the show. Rambling of valor. Absolutely. Uh, anyway, Against All Odds is the first book in his Grim War, Grim's War series. And listen, I don't throw down this praise often, but I told him to his face. This reminds me of On Basilisk Station by Weber. Oh, wow. The first Honor Harrington book. It is very good. And, um, uh, you know, say what you want about Weber and his writing now. His his first, like, six Honor Harrington books were, like, some of the best military science fiction ever written. Uh, in my opinion, IMO. Uh, but uh, Jeff drove to Idaho and told <laughs> Jeff to his face, that's right, I did. That's right. Oh, that reminds me. I've been uh, listening to Ice and Monsters by Peter Nealon on Audible at the gym. Oh, well, nice. with that, so still working my way through. I got an hour or so left. So, yeah, we had him, it's really good. We had him on the show okay. uh, two weeks ago, two, two weeks ago, yeah, ish, two weeks ago ish. Super nice guy. Oh, yeah, yeah he's he, he's awesome. And you know, the thing to remember too is when you're talking to him and he's all, he's all that, yeah, you know, it's just it's kind of cool. You're like, yeah, you're you're not fooling anybody, recon marine, yeah. We, we know you used to swim up to stuff and take pictures and swim away and nobody knew we were there. It's uh it's it's like the um you you talk it, it's like talking talking to a small Jack Reacher and he's very unassuming, but then he like <laughs> he counts to three and then jacks you in the nose at when he's on two. So would a small Jack Reacher be Tom Cruise? You know, so here's the thing. I almost couldn't watch the series on Amazon because I could not get Tom Cruise's Jack Reacher out of my head. And I know that this new guy is more like representative of the Reacher from the novels. And I really like the series. Like I watched it. It was a fantastic. But I was I was like, man, he just looks so much more different than if, if, if you're Tom Cruise and this guy. It's like the two like opposing sides and you couldn't get more further apart from each other yeah, it's like having a corgi next to a great day and really <laughs> <laughs> i don't know that i've ever heard tom cruise compared to a corgi but i'm <laughs> I, I, i'm on board with it I'm on board well with it, it. if you ever see the man in person he's tiny he's tiny what was the the uh, like every actress he stands next to? He's like shorter than, and I'm like, man, the the way the it's like it's like in Lord of the Rings where they had the uh, the perspective shots with the camera for Gandalf and the uh, the hobbits, and I'm like, couldn't you just do that to to Tom Cruise in real life though, not just in the movies? But think about it this way, right? Tom Cruise went out with all those different actresses because he probably went up to him and said, just consider this, I am the right height. <laughs> Indeed. I'm right there. Indeed. You know, I mean, so. that goes a long way. It goes a long way. But or, uh, did you guys he hear that? A, uh, oh, go ahead, Mike. He probably has a guy from the Church of Scientology who goes up and makes that line for him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's but, hey, did you hear? You guys hear that uh, a lot of people are petitioning Marvel Studios. Uh, they want the new Jack Reacher to play Captain America. I did not know that. Oh, are they talking about a rebooted cap? or Yeah, like a rebooted the... cap. Um, not that, reboot, that but like you know, in the next movies to come. I mean, anything's better than the guy that played it. Uh, the well, I don't know. It wasn't Captain America, but in the series, the oh, winner, U.S. Agent, whatever his name is, yeah, that guy's look. Uh, I don't know. I looked at him. I'm like nerd. Like you're saying it really loud. <laughs> he had a bad costume for what it's worth. The face wasn't great, but um, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it'd be hard to see someone else other than Chris Evans in that role, but uh, the guy's definitely got the physicality for it. Somebody was saying Tom Cruise was going to come in and like do a, like a cameo, like Iron Man from Iron another Man. dimension or something. Yeah, the uh, um, uh, Superior Iron Man from the series, because in the next uh, in the next um, Doctor Strange, they're bringing in a storyline where they start talking about the Illuminati. Yeah, and the Illuminati in Marvel is a is a really big thing. So, um, well, I heard. Did you hear in the trailer the guy that's like standing at that? court deal it sounds like professor x that's what it everybody's is. thought is it really okay yeah cool. yeah because uh the illuminati was uh prince namor of atlantis um professor xavier reed richards from the fantastic four and then black uh, uh black bolt and then iron man very cool so yeah i, I would love for him to step out of his iron man costume and have somebody say hmm 
I pictured him as taller. I would like, I would love for that to happen. Like every time somebody says, you ever, you remember Lake Placid, the movie from the nineties yes. with the, with the big crocodile yep. and the guy picks up the big toe and the dude says he, I, I thought he was taller or something like that when he, I, yeah. So anyway, Hey, let's talk about some uh, tabletop games and some short ish stories. Um, the, the first episode or, uh, edition whatever you want to call it is is it is it um yield to overcome the snow hunter's moon right uh that's the second one i think oh well, let me bring up the first one there we go uh tenju dreams is that tengu yeah, that, that's that's that's, that's a cover with the uh, robo samurai right yeah. there yeah yeah and if I'm not mistaken, that's art by uh, oh god Joe Singleton. Joe Singleton's one of his last pieces before he passed. Pour one out for my homie. Oh yeah. man, I missed Joe. Very cool. Yeah, so we Walt and I were talking. We wanted to have wanted to do some short fiction. Thought it'd be fun to put out a zine for it. And um, Joe happened to have this great art he did for one of Walt's stories, set in the fan favorite um, Hunter's Moon universe, which is the same as uh, where Walt's mongrel novels happen. And um, so that's that's blaster bolts and you see we're kind of going for a 1970s kenner packaging aesthetic oh yeah i love that and i i love the the torn i don't know if you can see it on on here the torn thing up here yeah the packaging it was a you know obviously shelved by some wayward teenager at two in the morning and, uh, <laughs> but uh yeah that was the idea we had and um there is an old school uh rpg called white star which is based on um Swords and Wizardry, uh, White Box, and uh, a guy named James Michael Spun was like, hey, why don't you combine your peanut butter with my chocolate? I've got a bunch of material. He was the creator of the system, and he kind of doesn't do that anymore, but he gave us a bunch of articles uh, for a song, really. So we combined his RPG material with um, our fiction. Yeah. And we've got, a, I think, a bunch of your listeners um, have submitted stories. I know J.R. Hanley, we've got two of his stories. Oh, here. wow. Um so for the next uh, six or eight weeks, we're going to be cranking these out once a week. And then uh, the next issue, issue two just came out today. Got another story from Walt, a continuation of this one, along with an associated adventure. And uh, we, we do some cheesy ads in the back. First of all, I, I you, you mentioned the ads. I want to talk about it for a second because that was those were amazing. Uh, so <laughs> I, I want to scroll through this issue, if I may, uh, Please. The, the way it, the way it looks is fantastic. I, I love the the artwork and then the the the, the page inlays or whatever. Um, uh, that was uh, Bradley McDivitt did the inlays. He's a great guy. Uh, I'll talk about the story in a minute, but when you get down to the end, there's you know your your a little bit about the character, a, a map for what you're doing, and then you know the, the the stats and everything, and then you get down to this piece right here, and <laughs> this I thought was the coolest thing. I didn't know what it was when I was when I was looking at it. I was like, "Oh, what's this? A comic of uh, is this a put, put something from the the story?" And then I start reading, and I'm like, "That's amazing!" And then you have the the coupon or whatever down here, and I'm like, "I remember this shit, and this yeah. is really cool." Yeah, I remember back when we were kids. I think we're both about that same age, right? And the chance to get the Boba Fett action figure was the biggest goddamn deal in your young life. One hundred percent. Save those stupid proof of purchase. You send them away. And you got a certificate for Christmas saying, we'll get that back to you as soon as we can. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or you get something that looks nothing like the picture. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it was just we're going for that kind of 70s Western nostalgia, 70s sci fi. You know, you can tell by the packaging. And I just wanted to kind of go for that same feeling I had as a kid reading Star Wars of, at Marvel, you know, with, with the packaging and design aesthetics. So that's where we're at with that. And I, it, it's a lot of fun. I think it's a good time. It's, it's, it's a most fun you can have legally for a dollar <laughs> right or or uh the exchange rate is i think 294 on the, on your cool little price ticket up here which yeah. i think it was interesting it's like five thousand uh, rubles as of an hour ago <laughs> 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 um topical humor folks topical humor yeah to i love it uh okay so I, first of all, like I said, I love the packaging. I love the aesthetic that you're going for. Uh, I mean, even the font and and you know the the quasi metallic uh, packaging that you're saying it just really really pulls in what you're trying to do with it. I think is great. Uh, uh, let's talk about the story a little bit or the the stories that are involved because that both stories, Tingu Dreams and Yield to Overcome the Snow. 
uh, involve um, the same characters, and it's kind of a, a cont continuation, as you, if you will, even though they're not directly connected. Uh, Walt, with these stories, um, did you write them in mind for this specific project, or were they already done? No, they were. Um, they they started as a a, a, a story plot um, that I had for a future project. So, um, uh, the Hunter's Moon that we're doing uh, with Athon Books um, um, is very um, Star Wars meets John Wick. So it's it's got moments where it's really dark um, because the majority of the protagonists are criminals. Right. Um, so um, I wanted a section of the universe that wasn't. Um, that still showed the universe is this dangerous place, but that there was still good to be had in the universe. So um, I had an idea for doing a young adult uh, tie-in to the Hunter's Moon. So, um, you know, kind of like, um, uh, what's that Katniss thing where they're shooting the arrows and stuff? Uh, Hunger, uh, Hunger Games. Games, you know, Hunger like, Games. Like target that audience a little bit and, and have a character that starts off as a young child, but grows into herself and... Uh, grows into <laughs> sorry i'm playing with it i'm sorry i'm sorry you know grows into the story um and uh you know when you see uh like samurai type characters um you, you always see them as this established thing or uh you know um or you have the master that's died uh but you never really get to see the 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 like going through the process um and a big part of that at the end is like a uh, a rite of passage uh but the story is um is about a young girl whose parents are um running a shipping business and they get attacked by pirates um they force the ships to crash um on like a junk planet where they can you know salvage parts take prisoners blah 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 and then uh the girl escapes and in the process of her escape she finds a friend um, the the hardest part about this was originally a lot of these stories were set up to be um, uh, like full novels. Mm. Um, and Mike in the beginning was like, yeah, it's going to be great. We're going to have this and this. And you get 4,000 words. I'm like, dude, that's a taste. Well, <laughs> I can do I'm that so, in an afternoon. <laughs> I'm so very sorry. I had this idea they're going to be shortened. And then I, but Walt was basically the only writer I worked with who could even get down that short. Everybody yeah. else was like, nah, man, man, 6, 8, 10, 12. I was like, like, now, now granted, the, this story was actually written um what was it two years ago now a year and a half ago you know during covid time has kind of lost it, <laughs> it, it sounds right yeah yeah so uh we did this actually a long time ago and they're just coming out now because you know mike uh wanted to get a, a good collection so he could release them uh to uh to anybody who really enjoyed them you know hey we're gonna get this one this week we'll get this one this week this one will come out next month yeah trying to build some momentum weekly releases for a couple months and then segue hopefully we've developed some kind of audience at that point and we can point them to a kickstarter that will fund the layout on the uh, anthology or the compilation rather and then we're gonna take all those stories strip out the rpg stuff and do an anthology on amazon and um kindle and that's the plan so had to wait until i had six or eight of them together so i could do that so and uh are they all are they all set in the the hunter's moon universe or uh like you oh. mentioned jr hanley gave you some i i really wish uh just, just walt gave us two stories that are set in that and then walt gave us kind of a doom homage that's going to run in our, our horror issue oh, um, interesting I yeah. got more than 10,000 words that time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, got so many stories. Uh, got whew, one of the guys. We got a guy who did a Star Trek novel. I'm trying to remember the name. Let me let me pull up my spreadsheet here. Mike, um, Dave, Phil. Dave, Phil. <laughs> um, oh, God. Uh, I, I he, thought he was really giving you the name. I'm like, oh, he's messing with him. I like where this is going. <laughs> I like this. Um, God, do you remember who wrote, wrote Warfish? Was that Terry Mixon? Hmm. Um, okay. Anyway, I've got a few, uh, got a few established authors like that in there. Uh, a lot of new authors, more established authors like Walt. One or two. Uh, we got a guy who wrote an episode of Voyager. He's done a couple of uh, oh, cool Star Trek novels. So there's kind of a, a wide panorama. I'm still trying to track down a few other folks. Um, you know, I had a bunch of pros said, "Yeah, I'll be glad to write for you." And then they kind of go off to write for Marvel or DC or whoever. And it's like, "Hey, remember you promised me that story back in the day?" Uh, right. Yeah, so I, you guys would do anthologies. I'm sure you've had similar experiences. So, oh yeah, a couple, yeah. 
But uh, yeah, it's happening now. Going to run through them all in the next eight to ten weeks, and then um, take it to Kickstarter to fund the uh, omnibus and uh, have the anthology come out on Kindle. So it's uh, going on now. Yeah, the fun. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Walt. No, go ahead. I was going to say the fun thing about this is if you really enjoy the story, um, you can flip to the back, and there's all these game stats. And um, um, James, the guy who originally did White Star, um, this is the Galaxy Edition. Mm -hmm. And the uh, but you can get the uh, the smaller editions. Uh, originally, uh, this this came out in uh, two or three books. And what happened was he was like, you know, I could add a couple more things and put together a collected. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, but you can get those um, those initial entries uh, that allow you allows you to play through these games in the back for really next to nothing. In some cases, they pay what you want. Um, uh, the print copies are very, very affordable. Um, so, I mean, it, it, you know, you could have a nice, you know, sit down, have a nice read with, uh, you know, some short fiction. And then if you really enjoy it, grab some dice, grab some friends, and then you can play through, uh, the adventure that's pretty much, um, you know, kind of hinted about in the, uh, in the story. Yeah. Um, White Star is a fun system and it's easy. If you've ever Super played D&D, &D, you don't know the bones of it. And, um, it's affordable as Walt says. So it's a, it's a good date and it's a cheap date. So one of the questions I had was uh, the uh, so you have the, the the little suggestion box or whatever for the the, the kind of player you want to play and uh, for instance like soldier they could be any race kind of thing uh, and these these maps that accompany each story which which are paired with the story in a significant way um, I, and I notice here that there's some 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 it says adventure hooks but it's basically like this is what your game could be uh is when the game comes out or when the collection comes out is there going to be like a longer um uh campaign that connects different uh, these maps or are they just like single like really short one sit down one playthroughs uh yeah we're, we're just going for one shots for the most part and, and the yeah. adventures aren't always uh tied into the story either in fact the only okay they really only are for waltz i think um it would have been nice to do it all the way through but it's um it's challenging having a full-time job and trying to run the zine and deal oh, with sure. all you know all the submissions and the gaming stuff so um usually the adventures the gaming material and the story are all you know separate and our adventures are all one shots um I got this theory about RPGs. I, I think everyone's just playing one shots or short campaigns these days. Anyway, I think people talk about a long campaign, but just the logistic challenges and getting your, your friends to get together regularly for six months to a year is it's insurmountable for most people. So short yeah. little, little, you know, five to six sessions or just you do a one shot here and there. And uh, I think that's how folks are actually doing gaming stuff these days. So just my two cents. No, I agree. Uh, I, I actually really enjoy um, one. Of the, I don't play tabletop games a lot, but when I do, it's um, it's usually not a story like RPG based. It's like turn based. Like, have you guys ever played? Um, it's Star Trek, but I can't remember what the actual game is called. But you spread it out over like a, a huge table, and you can be the different races of Star Trek, and then you can you, the oh the, Starfleet battles. Is that what it is? It it because you build the space, you build the space as you play the the game, and you find different systems. And that's fun. I, I really like that. But again, like that kind of thing takes like nine hours to play, and and now you're talking about doing campaigns over several days. That's a big a big commitment for a lot of people. I mean, you got a family, you got a job, you got other, you know, it's you got to mow the yard or shovel the sidewalk every once in a while. It's hard <laughs> to get that kind of time, you know. So, are you? Um, I know you're running the Kickstarter for the anthology, the and the the game. It, 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 if this you know catches on and there's a lot of interest in continuing, you see, you have six or eight or more. Are you are you looking for um, new authors to write short stories for you still, or what? Um, I wish we had talked about it a year ago because I was. Uh, right now, I am. I got so much fiction. I'm trying yeah. to get. <laughs> pair, it with, pair it with adventures. Uh -huh. um, if, if we have a lot of response and we'll be looking to do a volume two in 2023, well, that sounds like a, that sounds like a science fiction year, right? If we're doing that, then we'll I'll be hitting you guys up and asking for some submissions. Um, but yeah, as for right now, we are tapped up on fiction and just trying to uh, get the last few issues laid out at this point. I mean, it's a good place to be. At least you're not yeah. struggling for the the content, which all I think is is the the worst of the two ends to be on. 
I would agree. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Um, like Walt says, we've been doing it for a couple of years now. We just uh, finally Walt and a few other people were like, you know, Mike, you should release all those zines you've been laying out and putting together. I'm like, oh, all right. I guess it's time. <laughs> well, because you run B uh, Banff too. I, I podcast way too much, Josh. Yeah. We, <laughs> I, I, there's always a show on Monday and you can catch us either on our YouTube channel or um, the Sci-Fi Writers Play Old School D&D Twitch channel that Walt uh, often administers. And uh, Monday, lunch, we do a lunchtime beat em up for an hour. And uh, then I do various shows throughout the week where we talk about gaming stuff or comic stuff or movie stuff. So, um, and uh, yeah, so I do that. Uh, I run a small, my publishing company, Fango Games. We do a lot of stuff there. And then I have a full time, 40 hour week job uh, doing Unix administration. So, and I got a nine year old boy. So, you know, we, uh, don't forget the Corgi and the Great Dane. Corgi and the Great Dane. <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah, there's. There's a lot of cleanup involved, the Great Dane. I won't want to give you the details, but you can imagine. <laughs> One of the stories may or may not have something called the Eye of Terror that was inspired by. <laughs> I, I there's a there's a shovel in my backyard. Um, it's not used for gardening. Just, uh, <laughs> so it's it's funny because I've got like a five pound dog, and uh, so like her craps are as big as my finger, and I'm I just take them with a broom and throw them in the grass. <laughs> so anybody else that then they have the big monster dogs, I'm like, yeah, no, thanks. It's, um, I don't like to say it in front of other dogs. Hey, there we go. How you guys doing? Hi, Balder. Yeah. It's like walking a dude is what I can paint it to. It, it sounds weird when you say it that way, but just he uh, said, you... Josh has an appetite. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, James. <laughs> I love James. It's messed up. Messed up. Yeah. His dog is food for Walt's dog. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. And yeah, the, the new chain one chain falls away. The new one saw a um uh what are those little like uh papillon dogs, the little frilly ones? Mm -hmm. And was yeah. like squeaky. I'm like, no, it's not a squeaky toy. <laughs> Dad, can I have it? Can I have it? Dad, oh Dad. My God. You know, and it's it's funny too, because like the you know, I got the big Belgian Malinois, the big police dog. Mm -hmm. And he he jumps like crazy, right? Mm -hmm. But she's stronger than he is, right? <laughs> so like she'll go, you know, she'll go to like pull something. And the other day she pulled um she pulled my wife across the road when it had snowed. My wife lost her footing and she was off the curb across the road, across the street. And finally the dog was like, You gonna help with this, or are you just gonna just lay there and get dragged? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the great Dan actually dragged my wife in the park a couple months back. Nice. She, yeah, I, I was designated dog walker for about two months after that. But your wife was in the army; she could handle it. She was, yeah, she's former military, military intelligence though. So you know, but it's a it's a hundred twenty pound dog, and when he, when he wants to go full speed, it's it's a lot. Right on. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, well, you've got the links for both of the. Um, pdfs or the, the issues if you will i'm going to share both of those in the live chat right now if i can and then our one and only ken brits uh will be putting them in the show notes uh, perfect thanks ken this takes a lot more concentration than <laughs> i thought it would take to put in there we go now we got it um let's see oh you also had the facebook group yeah yeah i was just saying that's probably a good place to check for future updates um if i was a better publisher i'd probably have a landing page for blaster bolt set up by now but i fortunately do not do you want me to do that on uh, like like blog spot or something like that for you mike <laughs> when you do that <laughs> voice i don't know if you're being serious Walt. <laughs> i'll set it up for you if you want me to set up a quick page yeah. for you Sure, uh, you know, a Mailchimp or something, just so we can shoot out updates or whatever. Oh, that's easy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so I've got, uh, nope, that's not the wrong, that's not the right one. It's right here. Uh, okay, so I've got the links to the White Star uh, Galaxy Edition book uh, that you talked about earlier, the links to both issues and uh, Fainting Goat Games. <laughs> Leo, thank you very much. Finally, somebody <laughs> recognizes <laughs> my abilities. And yeah, Thank Leo's you. got a cool avatar pick there. Looks like he's a miner. <laughs> he's, he's a miner. <laughs> yes, Leo is a miner. Uh, um, and a miner what? 
Um, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Leo, if you know Leo, he's a, is... a major pain in my ass. <laughs> yeah. is what he is. Leo's cool, dude. Uh, uh, cool Leo, dude. Leo's good peeps. Uh, so uh, aside from this stuff, do you guys have anything coming out? I know, uh, Walt, your your all of your books are are the Hunter Moon trilogy is out. The audio books are done. What what's next in the pipeline for you, man? Ooh, um, what can I talk about? <laughs> That's the thing <laughs> that you can. Yeah, uh, what's can the next Walt Robillard book? Um, uh, you, got, you got the other ice show coming up, right? Yeah, the where yeah, um, and Leo's loaning me that thong for that one, so I can't say that with a straight face. <laughs> I can't even. <laughs> I can't even. Um, so uh, yeah, the next uh, the next thing uh, I have that that will probably see some light of day is uh, I'm doing I'm almost complete with my submission for um, uh, Galaxy's Edge Order of the Centurion. So oh, nice. Yeah. And uh, Josh, uh, as much as you came to me and said, hey, I would like some advice on mm -hmm. this um, army stuff. Um, I had to go to um, a man who ditched the army for your side of the fence. Ooh, nice. Yeah. I, one yes. of my friends that I worked with when I was very young, he was like, wow, you know, this army life is pretty intense, but I'm not tortured enough. And he went to the toughest military school in the, in, in, uh, the United States. So he became a United States Air Force pararescueman. Ooh, nice. And I called him up and I'm like, hey, I'm writing a story and I want to do pararescue. He was like, you're an ass. Meet me for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> so pararescue uh, yeah. gets overlooked a lot. They, those dudes are no joke. I mean, yeah. it's a, just the MOS training is two years long right you know so that doesn't count basic training airborne school high altitude low opening parachuting high altitude high opening parachuting all this stuff but i mean like these dudes much like the guys that go through sockham and the uh and uh the 18 delta series special forces medics course um these guys these guys do rotations at some of the busiest hospitals in places like chicago and detroit so mm. that they can see copious amounts of gunshot wounds and treat and learn to treat them on the job. Yeah. I mean, these guys are no joke in regards to their schooling. So I, I uh, the galaxy's edge book order of the centurion that's coming out. Um, it kind of reflects that side of the Legion, um, nice. a side that's dedicated to recovery of down pilots, recovery of down, whatever. And since the Legion is the, you know, the premier organization, the 1% of the 1%, uh, I figured it only made sense for them to have a recovery operation. So, so I'm curious, uh, in the having, having authored a galaxy's edge already of this Korean book, uh, yes, I, <laughs> yes. uh, in the timeline, is it, current timeline is it uh prior legionnaire timeline like it takes place right um a little before um the battle of kublar oh okay so it's it's know. it's modern but it's it's a it's like a year or two before yeah um there's a lot of complaints because um <laughs> Uh, I wanted to reflect some of the negativity I feel toward the current administration and its treatment of the military. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they want, much like uh, certain units in the army, they wanted uh, elements to look good rather than be good. Indeed. And so that has infected a lot of military operations that you see. Uh, so one of the things uh, I, I did was... Um, um, there's a lot of conversations, and when these units refer to themselves, they call themselves one thing. But there, if there's any military liaison at all, they're like, well, you know, the House of Reason does not approve that name because it is, <laughs> it is that could be triggering. And the fact that you're using it could trick. I mean, it's like, yeah, you do know we shoot people for a living, right? Right. You know, and at one point, one of the characters looks at a dude and is like, look, we are trained to fix the holes other people put in if you keep talking i'm going to put the holes before i fix you so i can put more holes back in you know and he's it's but like yeah there's a there's an entire section of uh, them having to deal with um a um a governmental structure that very much wants to say we have this amazing organization but doesn't want to let them do their job yeah so, what's it called um Call sign Valkyrie. 
Oh, very nice. And that's that's the problem because they're like, you know, that's from a former religion that nobody talks about anymore. And that religion could be triggering because if tenants of the oak and like the guy goes for a minute and they're betting, like they start betting, like 20 bucks says the guy says uh, the new sergeant punches him in the teeth. Yeah. You know, so like, but yeah, it's 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 cool. It's um, but it's it deviates from the from the normal formula in that it's not just squad based action there's there's a legitimate rescue element to it and like what goes into that and so yeah that's what i'm working on right now i uh so on i i also host the bain free radio hour and the last interview that i did uh was with uh some well michael z williamson tc mccartney and laird baron and they contributed stories to this anthology, Weird World War Four. I'm really <laughs> glad that I said it really well. Uh, but you, you mentioned this this uh, wanting to look good and not actually be good and kind of mentality that's kind of infecting a whole bunch of stuff. Michael Z. Williamson's story is freaking hilarious because he does that on not only on a meta level, but also on a level where you're reading it going that's hilarious on the face but being military you Terrible. know that it's also true and scary at the same time like they had to set up um like mental service uh counselors because people were getting too many paper cuts and tr being triggered by all the paperwork and all the stuff they had <laughs> like oh it's hilarious they they had like this little <laughs> like cut scenes of what was that basically the entire premise of his story is that world war four was fought over paperwork <laughs> and and that the That's and awesome. that and that the russians uh flew over like the biggest and, and this is also part hilarious the biggest a uh, non-clean running aircraft in the world so it was still fuel based and so they got fined because the aircraft wasn't green energy powered <laughs> and then when the aircraft landed they 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 put out all these pallets of paperwork and because of how the bureaucracy worked, if they if they had questions about who owned what, the the military guys were like, just saw, sign it all as received. We'll sort it later. Oh, God. Well, because they signed everything as received, they took in this declaration of war from the Russians. <laughs> and the whole thing is like going through these. It was hilarious. And they're they're Oh, my God. They've got to like use the right pronouns. And and oh, it was it was just so fun. Uh, so when you mentioned that, I thought of that short story. And I think it's it's out now that the the, the ebooks uh, nine dollars. It's, you know, oh, it's traditionally right. published. It's, uh, but if you if you've got a couple of books. Uh, I mean, definitely read the, your Ford and Centurion book when it comes out, but check out Weird World War Four and read that story if you want to just laugh the entire time because it's that's awesome. Like ten thousand words of tongue in cheek, like he's literally he's poking the other side, if you know what I mean. Oh like, my god! Yeah, you know, and and that's the thing too. Like, um, uh, you you get a lot of questions, especially um, you know, because. Uh, I, I write a lot of mil military products and yeah, uh, we're pretty visible because of my work with galaxy's edge and also because of the Banff podcast. Um, and you get a lot of questions, you know, and it's like, it's like, Oh, do you hate it? Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, yeah. no, 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 you, you, you totally misunderstand. Right. Um, so uh, the military is not about uh, race, color, gender, belief, or um, systematic implementation. It is about the ability to overwhelm and crush the enemy. A lot if of people can, don't get it. Yeah. And if you can do the job, you can do the job. You know, like uh, we had a lot of questions uh, coming my way because uh, somebody was like, hey, did you see that guy who's a major who's a Sikh and they're going to let him wear a turban? I'm like, okay, he's also going to be able to wear a beard too. Yeah. Um, now, my thing would be um, as a, um, if I was a military officer, I'd be like, yes, we acknowledge your, uh, your religious belief. Um, which, by the way, if you don't, if you've never met or dealt with anybody who's from the Sikh religion, one of the coolest things ever, it's part of their religious faith that they have to be armed all the time. There's really? always a dagger. Yeah. Always carry yep. a knife. Yeah. Always carry at least a knife. So how do they get away with that in like basic training? Is that just a waiver that they've got? A... It's 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 usually a pin in the uh, or a knife that acts like a pin to hold the turban together. Interesting. Yeah, right. They're a very self-sufficient uh, uh, subculture. You'll never see a Sikh beggar. 
you know, but like uh, the, the cool, the cool thing is, you know, if you were, if you were that military officer, it'd be like, yes, I acknowledge your religious belief. I want you to continue to serve and serve our country. And I, I, I'm wholeheartedly appreciative that you're here to do this. However, you need to sign this because what's going to happen is um, we, this says you cannot sue the government of the United States um, if you die in a chemical attack, because mm. the mask won't fit in your face properly with all that facial hair and the yeah. turban. Yeah. You know, so it, it, it like little things like that, like, it, you know, it spring up all the time. And it's like, look, it doesn't matter your race or, or you know, what color or, you know, if, if you're a uh, multifunctional Martian, right, <laughs> you're on holiday and you decide right. you want to be an airborne ranger. If you can complete 12 pull ups and then do a PT test at the 18 year old standard yeah. for 80 percent. Get your green ass in line and get yourself a pair of boots, buddy, because we're on it, you know? So, I mean, but that's, that's the thing, you know, like it, these, these, these stories are coming out and poking at all this fun, but the danger in that is that this is really going on. And very, yeah, very much so. Yeah. We have, we have an entire military that's been crippled because um, they have counselors walking around now going, have you been triggered? Do you need to talk? It's like it's interesting. I saw a TikTok to just today, um, and I thought it was the original video, but it happened. It was somebody had stitched it, and the, the it started out with this female that was upset about the war, like the the possibility of going to war. She was actually crying, and you know, a lot of us. She she basically said, and I'm paraphrasing, a lot of us signed joined the military to serve, but not to go to war. And like just all this like, you know, woe is me type stuff. And whoever stitched it, uh, this dude was like, first of all, I like she was scared and all this. And, she, and he goes, I acknowledge that you're scared. And I 100% will stand with you and say it is OK that you're scared. 100%. I will never call you a pansy for being scared to go to war because war is serious business and people die and it's OK to be scared. But you knew when you signed up for the military, the mil all they do is fight wars. It's not like you joined and you signed up to deliver pizzas and now you're getting <laughs> shot. Like the military fights war. That is the whole point. And it's funny because one of the lines in Williamson's short story is they're having this briefing in this war room and there's all these generals and aides and stuff. And they're arguing back and forth and they're yelling. And finally, the guy that's leading the meeting, like he bangs on the table and he stands up. And when he bangs on the table, he actually gets fined social credits because he's out. He's like having this oh outburst. My God. Yeah. He's having this angry outburst and the computer's like, you have been fine. Blah, blah, blah. It's like demolition man. Demolition and the, man. And, the uh, and he says, you all can't fight. This is a war teleconference. <laughs> <laughs> And shuts everybody down. No, it's hilarious because that, oh. I mean, it's hilarious and sad at the same time. So... <laughs> Jay says, I cried before I went to war and I don't blame the stripper or the rum. <laughs> I wouldn't blame the stripper. I'd definitely blame the rum, though, for sure. Oh, my God. That's awesome. Rum has a lot to answer for. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's here, there's there were a lot of dudes uh, on the Russian invasion of Ukraine who were told it was a training exercise. Mm -hmm. Oh, and wow. That's coming out more and more. Yeah. When they get over there and they're like, oh. We're this, really being shot at. Yeah. These people are mad at us. There's a there's a gut check, and uh, I mean, I don't. There's a lot you can't believe right now because there's psyops on both sides. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, like the ghost of Kiev, and you know what's interesting is I saw the, uh, uh, you know, there's 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 a whole bunch of you can't do like war propaganda, and they're like this is war propaganda. Well, whether it's not or true, or the the Snake Island guys where they said it was 13, but it was actually 82, and they told the they did tell the Russians to fuck off. So I don't know, like. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, whether it's 13 or 82, that's pretty legit. Um, but then like the um they're like they're just handing guns to like men and like let's go shoot. And they're like actually like they're doing damage and like they're pushing the Russians back or whatever. And I'm like, that's that's I mean, you, you can't 
you can't blame the people for for doing what they're doing. And... I would love to see a short story where somebody deals with the psyops thing, yeah, right, and then see it from the other side, like where you're looking at the screen in America, going, "Oh my god, that's the greatest thing ever!" Right? Because like some of the stuff that's coming out right now, after somebody launched that Ghost of of Kiev thing, yeah, right, there were like a hundred different things, and my two favorites are the Shark of Kiev. Mm. Where it's like, you see the guy swimming in the water, and he's like, has single-handedly sunk six <laughs> Russian submarines <laughs> with a wrench. Yeah. You know? And then there's the other one that that I don't know if I can say this, like, because this is a family show. That's all it, right. Say it. Uh, you can say it. Well, there's a yeah. um, uh, there's the swallower <laughs> of of something, right? And uh, apparently was going. Oh, around, I saw that one. Yeah, giving, I saw that one. Giving yeah. blowjobs, and right as they're about to climax, stabbing them in the femoral <laughs> artery. <I'm> like, <laughs> oh, like, it's great. Single-handedly taken down sixteen Russian soldiers after a blowjob. I'm like, yeah. oh my god, that's crazy. It's amazing. But um, you know, if people put as much energy into fixing the problems as they did in constructing these memes, yeah. um, we would be shooting at each other a lot less. Oh, yeah, yeah for I, sure. I, the, the babushka who goes up, you get, there's a video. Gives the, <laughs> the sunflower seeds. Oh, yeah, the sunflower yeah. seeds. I, like, I, 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 I love that exchange. I don't think that's real. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of people saying that, you know, it's not real. It's real. You know, people are people are getting hurt. It, it's you know, it's 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 a it's a shitty thing. That's for sure. Oh, I, yeah. I, I I've done a lot of Russians and Ukrainians, and they've got a very the, the Slavs in general. A lot of them have kind of a very fatalistic view on the world. I, I, you can kind of see it happening. At the same time, I'm like, that'd be a great scene in a book or a movie. But it's, yeah. it's hard to picture it actually happening. And uh, speaking of horrible things in the world, I have a meeting at my horrible <laughs> soul sucking day job, and this laptop over here, I gotta tap out for it but okay yeah, tap out man it was awesome walt always it was a pleasure um hope Cheers. you guys have blaster bolts and i will see you all around all right blaster mike thanks for coming on yeah, yeah. Bye. uh everybody else yeah we're gonna wrap up too uh i wanted to remind everybody um we're starting a new month tomorrow uh and which means a new month in keystro rimo so if you're looking uh for an excuse to join Keystro Rimo and you haven't yet, uh, just send me a message on Facebook or um, email keystrokemedium at gmail.com. Let me know you want in uh, and I will get you on the list. Uh, so far this year, uh, the group has ple well pledged. They've set a goal of 3.9 million. And so far this year, yeah. we have we've written... 1.4 million with a daily average of 51,000 words a day. Uh, so that's really cool. And it's always fun to see the community punching in their numbers. Uh, also the KSM flash fiction competition, since we were talking about short, short fiction, I think there's eight, well, seven days after today. So eight days total. I think March 7th is the cutoff for that. Uh, if you are wanting to submit a story to have Tony Weisskopf potentially uh, give her thoughts on that, uh, send your uh, story that has to be under a thousand words. And that's the, that's the really stitchy part is it's really tough to write a short story in under a thousand words. Uh, it's a fun exercise though. Hi, my name is And. And. Uh, so, yeah, the the cutoff date for that is March 7th, and then we will have a tally of the scores, and we'll shoot off those stories to Tony, and uh, shortly after we'll have first, second, and third place. Uh, Leo, I don't know when the next competition is. We'll have to work that out in the next couple of weeks and, and start up the next one. Uh, but again, you have a, about a week left to submit your short story to um it's ksmfiction at gmail.com is the email you want to send it to uh and uh yeah uh i think that's it everybody oh we're having some issues with podbean on the audio side so if you're trying to listen to uh any of the shows this week there's a, a little bit of a hiccup on the account where we're trying to get it worked out i'm got emails in the ether web don't forget to buy coffee like on Josh's shelf. Ooh, and don't forget to buy your coffee. Somebody said they had, who was that? I think it was Tom who was talking about coffee earlier. Somebody was saying they have writer's block and 
uh there it is i have rogers brock and kuna both for the french press the words flow like water it's true Sports it's awesome. true it's scientifically fact uh <laughs> KS uh, keystrokemedium.com slash coffee. You can get a bag of uh writer's block block, which fixes writer's block if you didn't know. So do that. Uh do we have somebody live? for some reason? I think we have somebody set up for next week. Oh, uh Tom Hoddle is gonna come on the show next week. Oh, nice. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about killing characters. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because that's the most fun that we can have. Uh writing books is killing our characters. So uh next week Tom Hoddle's gonna join us. We're gonna talk about killing characters. Until then, get your good words in. We'll come back next week. We're gonna talk about some writing, some reading, and everything in between right here on Keystroke Medium. Peace. <laughs>